So, hello everyone. Uh, I am uh, Paul Leguen de Carnaison. Uh, I am an embedded uh, software engineer at uh, Savoir-Faire uh, Linux. And uh, today I'm going to speak about uh, a little bit about the CPAS project and uh, how we brought in. Uh, my company, Savoir Faire Linux, we are uh, based uh, both in uh, Montreal and uh, in Rennes in France, and we are uh, experts in uh, embedded uh, software and uh, free open source uh, engineering. And uh, we, we've been working on uh, the CPAS project since the uh, last uh, couple of years. So, uh, what is uh, the CPAS project? Uh, CPAS means Software Enabled Automation Platform and Artifacts Align. Uh, globally, what is it? Uh, we are in a context of uh, energy transition, uh, as you all know, and uh, there is a lot of constraint with uh, this uh, new energy. And uh, the main constraint is uh, that uh, we have a multiplication of uh, the distributed controls. We have more and more power stations, and so we have uh, an increase of the data management need into uh, this power station. And so the idea is how can we bring some uh, free and open source uh, into uh, this, uh, this uh, power uh, station? And this is where CPAS is here. So to remind a quick reminder on the, the aim of CPAS, the goal of CPAS is to develop a reference design uh, with an industrial grade uh, on open source and real-time platform. CPAS uh, allow us to also virtualize platform and inside this uh, virtualized uh, platform, we, we can uh, uh, run an uh, automation platform for our uh, power station. And so uh, we can share multi-application provider and this combine uh, performance and safety. Uh, for 10 minutes presentation, I can present uh, in deeper uh, the CPAS project, but my colleague uh, Erwan already did it uh, last year uh, at Force 10 25, so if you're interested, uh, you can uh, see his presentation. So the main idea of this presentation is uh, how did we bring some uh, functional tests uh, to uh, the CPAS uh, project. And uh, for this, uh, I want to take a simple case study. So here is uh, the power lines you, you can see in the, in the campaign. And uh, you, you have a tree uh, after a storm that uh, fall on your power lines, and there is two lines that uh, touch each other, and uh, this is a, a big issue in your electri electricity uh, system. And so you have systems that uh, must cut the current uh, very quickly to avoid uh, any hazard on uh, people or on the uh, infrastructure. And so uh, how, do you, uh, how, how can you uh, have all this uh, uh, safety uh, uh, equipment with uh, CPAS? So I have a very simple representation of all of this is working. We have first a protection algorithm that uh, makes a decision if uh, there is or not a situation where there is an hazard or not. And this algorithm is uh, running inside a virtual machine and uh, this is where we have the CPAS project because uh, this is running inside a, a CPAS cluster, inside a hypervisor, etc. And uh, we have uh, on, uh, the other on the opposite side uh, an hardware which is uh, doing the monitoring uh, of, the, of our uh, architecture and uh, the communication between the CPAS cl cluster and, and the, the, uh, this hardware is done with a, uh, a protocol, maybe you know it, it's the ISC 61850 and uh, this is a protocol which is based on a TCP and uh, it generates a, a packets that we call a sample value and this is the communication between the CPAS cluster and uh, our hardware. And so why did we need a functional test? CPAS, as you see, is designed to work on a very critical infra infrastructure, which is a power distribution. And uh, if we have some uh, issue on the power distribution, uh, there is a 
the need of uh, the protection of the people and the protection of the uh, infrastructure because we have electricity hazard. And so in case of, of a failure, uh, the safety protection must react as soon as possible. And so this is why we need a very, very, very low latency transit of this uh, sample value that transit uh, with, uh, into uh, the CPAS cluster. And the last thing is that your power distribution in your country is uh, running every time. You have electricity in your home every time. And so we are a context of a 24 hour and seven a day context. And so we have to ensure that uh, this latency as low as possible every time. And so we are in a deterministic, deterministic system where determinism is, uh, is uh, the primary goal. And so we have a uh, big infrastructure, we have uh, expensive uh, items. And so maybe you are wondering, how can we, uh, in our labs, uh, at our desktop, how can we uh, simulate all of this uh, chain uh, simply? So this is uh, the work we've, we've been uh, working on. And so uh, I, I represent here a, a very simple uh, scheme about how, how, how can we uh, reproduce uh, this uh, protection chain uh, here in our lab. The first piece is uh, what we call the publisher machine. And uh, the goal of the publisher machine is to uh, generate the uh, IEC uh, 61850 uh, sample values. And then we have the CPAS cluster. And the CPAS cluster is composed of two parts. The first is the hypervisor, which are running virtual machine. And we have uh, the virtual machines, which runs all of the uh, software, which are uh, an SV client uh, receiver that will uh, proceed uh, the, uh, the sample values that have been sent by the publisher and a protection algorithm which takes the decision based on this sample value if we are an issue or not. I took here uh, a, a presentation with two hypervisors and three VM, but uh, it could be a totally different uh, architecture. So what tool did we use to, uh, to do that? First on the publisher machine, uh, we use uh, the pickup uh, format. Uh, this is a very ideal of a format because uh, we can reproduce uh, some uh, TCP uh, uh, traffic generation. And uh, for example, uh, we can reproduce uh, what uh, could be uh, happen uh, on uh, an uh, electricity infrastructure, uh, for example, a uh, 50 hertz electric electrical signal. And then uh, we replace them with uh, some tools. Here uh, I use a TCP replay to, uh, to send uh, this uh, packets with uh, the pacing uh, we want. We can use uh, some uh, PTP packets to uh, synchronize uh, all of this, but uh, keep in mind that uh, it's not, uh, it's not required, it's not an obligation to use. Uh, PTP is only used on CPAS when you wish to use uh, some uh, CPAS features such as uh, uh, VM uh, synchronization and uh, VM migration. But we are not, uh, this is not obligation to, to be used. And then on uh, the CPAS cluster, we have uh, first uh, uh, the uh, hypervisor uh, uh, side, and uh, we have uh, to have a very low latency. First, uh, we have uh, some uh, CPU core isolation. So uh, we, uh, we have done some work to uh, dedicate it some core only for uh, the Linux system that is running on the uh, hypervisor and uh, isolate some core only for the VM uh, which are running and do also some uh, IRQ and process isolation inside uh, Linux kernel to uh, be sure we have some priority for some application, etc. We also did some uh, BIOS optimization, uh, which is very hardware dependent, but there is a lot to do. Uh, there is thing like the, the, all of the uh, multi, um, the EPF threading uh, feature that uh, are very, very bad for determinism and you have to uh, disable this kind of uh, feature. And then uh, on the virtual uh, machines, we have uh, also, uh, it's kind of the same work that uh, we did uh, on the hypervisor side, uh, which is uh, all of the uh, isolation and uh, CPU and IOQ, et cetera. We uh, use uh, what is called uh, the PCI uh, pass-through. And uh, this is a very interesting uh, feature because it allows us to 
directly inside VM receive uh, take the, the packets which are received on the network interface of the hypervisor, and uh, this uh, brought some uh, good performance. And finally, we can also use some uh, SRIOV that can be, can be used if you have uh, multiple virtual machines. But keep in mind that even if, we, if you have uh, better results, this is uh, an optional uh, feature. So thank you for your attention, and uh, please let me know if you have a question, and I will uh, answer to it. Thank you. Uh, have you ever got any examples of real-world adoption of this, where it's, say, currently running? So you're asking if we have concrete uh, implementation of uh, the CPAS uh, project. Uh, currently, uh, no. Uh, we, we, I, I don't, we don't have uh, any uh, concrete implementation because CPAS is... Uh, currently only uh, in early adoption, but uh, we have a good uh, opportunity to be uh, it uh, in, the, in the future. Uh, but currently it is not in production if uh, it's uh, your, your question, but uh, it's uh, the goal of the, of the CPAS uh, project. If you don't have a, a grandmaster clock, what is the source of time? Mathieu, I will let maybe uh, answer this question about PTP. In production, we have to, to have a grandmaster clock, but for testing, we use uh, just uh, Linux PTP as a PTP clock. Thank you.